بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My brothers and sisters, you and I know that we're living in an age where social media is at a peak. We perhaps might see further growth in different platforms on social media. The internet itself has taken the world by storm for the last few decades. And we see so many things happening. The world has changed. People have changed. And you and I know that as time is passing, it's becoming more and more difficult to remain steadfast. There are so many challenges, so many things we need to talk about. The difficult discussions that people become so, so upset when you talk about them. We need to have these discussions. The reason is, we would lose ourselves to what is going on around us if we don't remind ourselves where we are, where we came from, and where we're going. Remember, you were made by a maker. You did not just come to this world to enjoy life and forget about the fact that you're going to leave this world one day. At the back of your mind, and in fact, as a Muslim, it's not even supposed to be at the back of your mind, but you're conscious of it all the time, I need to go back to my maker. What did I do to prepare for the day I'm going to go back to the one who made me? I'm on earth for a few years. Do you know 70 years is nothing? It's actually nothing. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, whom we consider the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lived for 63 years. How old are you? You're living perhaps on borrowed time. When I say borrowed time, I don't mean that a destiny was changed. But what I mean is it's almost done or others are already done at your age. May Allah Almighty grant myself and yourselves a good understanding. Now, we must embrace technology as believers. We have to embrace modernization to a certain degree in certain aspects of our living. No one should change the faith that we have. No one should change the belief that we have. I believe in Allah. I believe in the messengers. I believe in the books. I believe in the last day. I believe that good and bad fate comes from the Almighty and so on. No one should change that ever. No matter how modern you become. The five pillars of Islam will remain five pillars of Islam until the last day. And what's halal will remain halal forever. What's haram will remain haram forever. No matter what anyone says, nothing will change that. But can I have the latest vehicle that runs on water? And by the way, there is a vehicle that runs on water. The hydrogen, the H2O, they've separated it. They run with the energy that's derived from the hydrogen. And subhanAllah, before, before long, you and I will have that car, inshallah. We'll see normally Zimbabwe gets the first of the latest vehicles on earth. One wonders how. But alhamdulillah, it's a good thing. You know, we see, we just hear of a car. The next thing you see it on the street, mashallah, with an exotic number plate, by the way. But nonetheless, that aside, there is something called social media trends. Just talking about the vehicle. Can you hear one? Mashallah, amazing. Even the sound is on point, mashallah. May Allah Almighty grant us good use of our motor vehicles and everything else, alhamdulillah. Speaking about social media, like I said, we embrace it. As a believer, is there a limit to the use of social media? The answer is yes. Use social media to do one of two things. There is no third. Either you're doing good or you're doing something that's not bad. So one might say, well, if it's not bad, it's good. No, sometimes it's not bad, it's not good. For example, you're eating a burger, you say Bismillah, and you're eating the burger. Mashallah, it's neither bad nor good, Mashallah. Generally, obviously, if too much cholesterol and all that, we don't want to go into that debate. But it's neither an act of worship that you're going to encourage people regarding, come on guys, let's eat burgers. And it's not even something that's haram, right? It's just a trend you might want to participate in or you might want to start. That's neither good nor bad. But if you're a believer, you have borrowed time. Have you ever seen a football match where they're just kicking the ball around without the idea of scoring a goal? No way. The whole 90 minutes, the aim is to score as much as you can, even if they're winning 5-0. I was going to name some teams, but anyway, 
even if they're winning 5-0, let me tell you, they will keep on going to 10-0, 15-0. They want to break a world record. Never do they just sit and chill. The same applies with us. Score as many good deeds as you can. There's never a point in the life of a believer where you're just chilling. Even if you're going out on holiday, Remember Allah, moisten your tongue with goodness, make, make provision or make a plan for halal food for your prayer. That will convert your holiday into a massive act of worship. Imagine I'm going on a holiday. The first question is, is there halal food? Come on. That's a beautiful question. The next question is, is there a facility for me to pray? For example, will I be able to use this and that? All questions that would be helping you to convert that holiday into an act of worship. But unfortunately, we have something that's going on on earth right now. We need to talk about the social media trends that are inviting you to do something that is sinful, something that is against the law of Allah, something that is not in line with the purity of a believer. You as a believer are supposed to be clean, disciplined, pure and close to your maker, conscious of where you are and where you're going at all times. If anything is going to compromise that, please don't be a part of it. You know, people might talk about anything and everything. Some of these trends seem harmless, but if it doesn't make sense to you and it's not beneficial, please don't do it. Convert it into something that would become an act of worship. There are trends that you can easily convert. We call it halalize it or Islamize it. It's not difficult. Think it up. It might become a bigger trend than the original one. But if there is a trend that is silly, do you know what I've noticed on social media? It's becoming sillier and dirtier and more and more impure in terms of trends and better people are engaging in worse trends. I hope you understand what I just said. Better people, meaning people you least expected and suddenly there's, they are a part of this trend that is really promoting gay behavior, promoting something that is, for, for example, the, the, the religion frowns upon or there are restrictions to a degree on that particular item and here you are promoting it no matter what it is, just because you want to remain relevant, that's all. Or you want to get the likes or the follows. That is a disease. To want to get likes and follows by hook or crook is a big disease. It's happening to our youngsters and sometimes older people. They feel left out. They call it FOMO, fear of missing out. You've heard that? And honestly, you see an elderly guy or an elderly sister, for example, and you can tell straight there's FOMO happening here. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. So sometimes you notice good people. You didn't expect them not to know that this trend is actually satanic. And they're participating in it. And when you tell them, my brother, you know, they say, you know what? We are Gen Z. That's what they say. And what else do they say? They say, stop being hard and harsh. Please let us live. You know, we're letting you live. But you know what? You are going to die. And when you do, there is something you need to consider. Man sanna sunnatan hasanatan falahu ajruha. One part of the hadith. Man sanna sunnatan sayyiatan falahu wizruha. And then the, another hadith says, Listen to these three. The first one says, whoever sets a good example will get a reward of that example. And anyone who follows that example up to the end, you get a reward for what, what you did and what anyone who follows that, in inverted commas, trend did. Set a good example. I did a good trend. Why don't people do a trend of salah, a prayer, a trend of this, a trend of good things. But we have to do trends of silly things. Silly is still one thing, but haram or something impure or satanic or that goes against your connection with Allah. You're cutting the rope that's tying you to your maker and you're saying, stop telling us about anything because you know what? Let us live our life and enjoy. You might enjoy the other side also. May Allah Almighty forgive us. But the second part of it, whoever sets a bad trend, a bad example, will definitely get a sin for it and anyone who followed it right up to Qiyamah. Imagine, is it worth setting a bad trend? Is it worth participating in a bad trend? The reason is, someone else might have started the trend, but when you participated in it, your group or those who actually clicked on that particular video of yours or whatever it was of yours, 
And if they saw it because of you, you're getting a sin for all of those who were encouraged by you. People say, well, he did it or she did it. I'm going to do it too. Make sure you're doing the right thing. Remember the word purity. Is it pure? Is it good? Is it upright? Is it something that will displease my maker if this was my last day? Is it a good idea to go into something that is bad? Someone says, why do you have to talk about last day and death? Let us live our lives. That's because Allah says, when you are doing a good deed, think of it as the last opportunity to do a good deed. Do you want to hear the narration? Salli salata muwaddain. Simple words. When you pray, pray as though it's your last chance to pray to Allah. When you are fulfilling salah, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is telling you, fulfill every prayer as though it's your last opportunity to pray. If that is the case with good deeds, what on earth do you think would be the case with bad deeds? May Allah forgive us. We are human. We have to enjoy a little bit. Allah says, no problem. Enjoy. You can enjoy on condition that it doesn't cut the rope between you and I. That's what it is. So that's the second part of the hadith. The th another hadith that I mentioned just now, the Prophet Sallallahu says, you will follow the trends and the examples of those before you, shibram bi shibr, hand span by hand span, which means inch by inch, centimeter by centimeter, you will just blindly follow them. Even if they were to take you into a hole of a reptile, you would follow straight into that hole. Imagine there's a snake hole. Because everyone's going in the snake hole, we're going into the snake hole. For me, this hadith applies also for the social media trends. You know, trends, there are so many trends. You have an economic trend. Sometimes people are doing certain things. Everyone is doing one thing. It's a trend. Not necessarily bad or good. It just depends. Sometimes there's a social trend. Like I said now, if it's a social trend, you need to be more careful. Because more and more people with social media and technology are going to see it. So this hadith says, don't be blind. That's the lesson I learned from it. Don't be blind. Look carefully. Don't just follow others blindly. Think and ask yourself, is this a good thing? Because the same narration says, you will become used to following one after the other, anything that is done. Until when they want to take you down the pit, you just follow, thinking it's a good thing, it's a trend, it's a laugh. Come on, can we not have a laugh? You know, give me my money. Have you heard that one? People might say, it's a laugh. It is a laugh. That's neither good nor bad. But I can tell you what it is. I see some of the youngsters know what I'm talking about. I tell you what it is. You're going to be doing that. Today, it might just be a laugh. What did you do? You followed some person you don't even know doing something that never benefited you. And tomorrow it's going to get worse and uglier and uglier and dirtier and filthier. They've taken your purity away. They've taken your morality away. Soon they will take your faith away. That's all. And then they're happy and set. So then they start tattooing themselves all over and we're all going to do the same thing. That's what the hadith talks about. To say when they go into that pit with you, you will go with them into the pit. Therefore, be careful. All we are saying, do a good trend. Do good things. Have fun, have a laugh, no problem, it's permissible. I'm allowed to have a laugh, I'm allowed to crack a joke or two, no problem. But make sure it's within the limits. Don't become such that, you know, you're going to be embarrassed on the day of judgment when you arrive there and you wasted your time on earth. Like I said, some of these may be harmless according to you, but the harm is in the following of something, making sure that it goes across the globe. I promise you it is in order to remain relevant and nothing else. Before I came, I asked the AI tool that you have on WhatsApp, what is the meaning of a trend? Because I wanted to talk about it. And it gave me a whole write-up of it. And it says there, to remain relevant. Wow. That's how I know, subhanAllah. Remaining relevant. And you know what happens? It changes with the changing of time. People will soon no longer laugh about give me my money. They're going to need to say something dirtier and filthier and more and more immoral in order for you to be able to get hooked onto it because that won't be a laugh anymore. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. So the whole point of today's discussion is a relevant talk to say, use social media. Nobody's telling you don't. You have an account, please be responsible. If Allah told you that your prayer should be fulfilled in a way that it might be your last opportunity, in that particular case, it's more important for us to abstain 
from a deed that might be the last deed that we're going to engage in if it were negative. And I'm not being tough. I'm not telling you don't enjoy life. I'm not telling you divorce yourself from social media. We can't because everyone knows people have accounts on so many platforms. I did my own little questioning when I traveled to one country asking the guys, how many social media accounts do you have? Do you know on average, each person has minimum four, minimum. I didn't come across someone who said three, minimum four. You may know some of them, you may not know some of them. You ask yourself, how many social media accounts do I have? Considering that WhatsApp is also a social media account. Telegram is a social media account. What else? You have Instagram, you have TikTok, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have so many more. In some countries you have WeChat and some different names that may not be common in others. Still, imagine I've got so many social media accounts, okay? How many accounts do you have between you and your Lord? None. Did you pray this morning? No. But you guys are being too hard. We're not. This is reality and this is fake. That's what it is. May Allah Almighty help us. My beloved youth who are here, and even the adults, let's use technology to come closer to Allah. Let's use technology, really, to educate ourselves. There is a beautiful side of TikTok itself. If you know how to use it, you'll be educated. You can make a lot of money buying and selling things that are the latest things. Those type of trends, there's nothing wrong with it. Because I'm buying and selling that which is halal and I'm learning and I'm doing something. Why not? Use it, inshallah, to benefit yourself in this world and the next. But let's not use it in a destructive way. And when we talk about it, let's encourage each other. Don't just like and share something because it's a laugh. When that laugh compromises your faith, no. If it's not going to compromise my my faith alhamdulillah i may have a laugh i may do things but try your best to come closer to allah as the days pass because in that case when you are on your last breath you will be in your best in terms of your relationship with allah may allah almighty bless all of us